Our story takes place in New York City during the summer of 69. At the time, people in the LGBTQIA community faced all kinds of overt and unfair discrimination within the legal system in the U.S. They couldn't legally marry their partner or adopt children. They weren't allowed to serve in the military. They were barred from working for the federal government and routinely dealt with harassment and persecution. It was bad, really bad. Some cities enacted even stricter laws designed specifically to make it harder for LGBTQIA people to build community. The Big Apple was no different. In 1969, it was illegal in New York City to serve an LGBTQ plus person an adult drink or to dress as a member of the opposite sex. The rules were ridiculous and brazenly oppressive. Even so, there were still a few places where people could meet in private without prying eyes trying to separate them. One of those places was called the Stonewall Inn. It became well known as a gathering place for the community, and as a result, got regular visits from the police. They would show up unannounced, arresting anyone they could. For the patrons of the Stonewall Inn, it became a danger they were forced to brave in order to be themselves, and eventually, something had to give. That day was June 28, 1969. It started like any other night at the Stonewall Inn. People talked, laughed, danced, and hung out into the night. Like many times before, the mood suddenly changed as police officers flooded in around 1 a.m. They started wrangling as many people as they could, mostly employees, drag queens, and cross-dressing patrons. They were put in handcuffs and hauled off to the station. But this time, something changed. Instead of fleeing, most of the people from the Stonewall Inn gathered outside. Before long, the commotion caused other residents from nearby to join too. Now, a group of around 600 people were holding a spontaneous protest against the police, the unjust laws, and the way police and lawmakers were both mistreating the LGBTQIA community in the city. Things got intense, and the unrest lasted for six full nights. The news sent a shockwave across the city and ultimately the whole country. The tragic events of Stonewall became something of a rallying cry for people to finally start to stand up and protect the rights of LGBTQ plus people in the US. The incident became known as the Stonewall Uprising in the newspapers, and its impact was quickly felt across the United States. A year later, thousands marched to commemorate the Stonewall Riot, which many consider to be the very first Pride Parade. Inspired by New York's example, activists in Los Angeles, San Francisco, Boston, and Chicago organized gay pride celebrations for that same year. For the first time, LGBTQ plus Americans across the country started to really see themselves as a community that could work together to fight for their basic rights. Older gay rights organizations gave way to newer, more effective groups like the GLF and the GAA. Today, tons of cities and towns all over the nation celebrate Pride Month in June, and many of them have large parades or festivals to help spread the love. And it's not just the U.S. Lots of other cities and countries around the globe celebrate Pride Month. But wherever you are in the world this June, it's important to remember, no matter how far we've come since Stonewall, there's still tons of places around the world where LGBTQ plus people are routinely oppressed, which means it's just as important as ever to show your pride and support. Thank you.